G484 homework booklet question 12. So one assumption required for the development of the kinetic model of a gas is that the molecules undergo perfectly elastic collisions with the walls of the containing vessels and with each other. What is meant by a perfectly elastic collision? Um, interesting here in that it's making really quite explicit the link between the work we did on collisions and the work on the kinetic theory of gases. Uh, and of course a perfectly elastic collision is one where there is no loss of kinetic energy. You could say kinetic energy is conserved quite happily. So again uh, really just straightforward definition of an elastic collision. Three other assumptions for kinetic theory of gases. We've talked about these in last week's homework as well. Um, so we've got volume of the particles negligible compared to the volume of the gas. We've got no forces between the molecules except during collision. You can of course express that as saying that all of the energy is kinetic because if there are no forces there can't be any potential energy. The time of the collisions being much smaller than the time between the collisions and we've got large numbers of molecules moving with random velocities. Uh, so those were the four possible ones you needed to get three of those to get the mark. Part B is interesting in that it's essentially taking the ideas that we looked at when we developed P V equals the third N M C squared bar and essentially doing all those same ideas but doing them with specific numbers uh, for a specific molecule. So we start off with a cubical box of length side length 0.2 meters. The box contains one molecule of mass that moving with that constant speed. The molecule collides elastically at right angles with opposite faces x and y of the box. So first up we've got to calculate the momentum change. So a change in momentum will always be mv take away mu. The mass we were given, the mass of the molecule and the speed. So mv take away m and then if v is 500 then u has got to be minus 500 so in practice what we end up doing is adding those two things so we end up at 4.8 times 10 to the minus 23 so we've got um 500 lots there 500 lots there so it's a thousand lots um i've obviously taken uh v uh, as positive, so I've taken to the left as positive here. If you'd have done it the other way around, you'd have just ended up with a negative number, and uh, the mark scheme is quite clear that uh, it can be either sign. Calculate the number of collisions made by the molecules with face x in one second. So we've got to get our thinking straight here the number of collisions with face x so distance the molecule travels between one collision and the next is twice the side of the box the box has got sides 0.2 meters so the distance traveled between collisions if i go back to the answers uh, to my answer is 0.4 of a meter now the distance that the uh, molecule is going to travel in one second is 500 meters because it's traveling at 500 meters per second. So the question is essentially how many lots of the 0.4 seconds we can fit into 500 meters. In other words, it's 500 divided by 0.4 and that gives us 1250. Um, there are other ways of thinking about that. You could think of it in terms of the time between the collision being the distance, 0.4 divided by the speed, 500, and then uh, doing one upon that to get the number of collisions in one second. Uh, one way or the other, you, get, you should end up at that 1250. So, you're then asked to calculate the mean force exerted on the molecule by face x. So, we have get uh, force is rate of change of momentum. Uh, and that's actually the C mark without even putting any, um, without even doing any substitution there. Uh, so we've got 1250 times the 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3. So that's the total momentum change in one second, the number of collisions multiplied by the momentum change for each collision. And then dividing by that by the time interval, and the time interval we're using is one second. So we end up at 6 times 10 to the minus 20. Um, Hence state the force exerted on face X by the molecule, justify your answer. So the force 
exerted on the molecule by the face x is 6 times 10 to the minus 20. So we've got a Newton's third law situation, uh, 6 times 10 to the minus 20. Uh, you had to justify the answer, and that justification can either be as simple as showing that minus sign, because that's enough of a hint that you'll say, say Newton's third law, or explicitly saying by Newton's third law that must be the case. That obviously would be the safe thing to do in order to pick up the mark. We've got a single molecule being replaced by three moles of air at atmospheric pressure. First of all, calculate the uh, number of air molecules in the box. Very straightforward. We've got three moles. We multiply that by Avogadro's number, the number of molecules in one mole, and we end up with 1.81 times 10 to the 24. Um, yeah, really is that straightforward. Just remember what a mole is. One mole is that number of items, in this case, that number of molecules. Suggest why the pressure exerted by the air on each of the six faces of the box is the same. Uh, once we've got very large numbers moving randomly, uh, then we've got that kind of statistical evening out. So I want large numbers was required and moving in random directions uh, for the second point. So the idea of large numbers and random movement uh, will get means at any one instant the number of collisions on each face will be the same. And then finally, uh, we're asked to think about what happens when the temperature of the box of the air inside the box changes. Explain in terms of the motion of the air molecules how the pressure exerted on the wall will change. So there's no point in talking about PV equals NRT type arguments here. You've been asked to do it in terms of the motion of the air molecules. So uh, two marks and first mark we've got an increased kinetic energy and therefore an increased speed. And then for the second mark either that means we get more collisions each second, and therefore, of course, a greater number of a greater momentum change each second, or indeed we get a momentum change, a greater momentum change for each collision. So both of those follow from the fact that we've got an increase in speed, and either of them will explain a greater momentum change each second, and therefore a greater force. I'd have been tempted to write both uh, for safety. Okay, so that was G484 homework booklet. Question 12.